Hey, I want to invite you guys, if you've been listening to this podcast and enjoying this content and are passionate about protection, you should know that we have an entire library of all of the protector symposiums that we've ever done uh, hosted at protectornation.com. You can go there and you can download those and you can watch every protector symposium we've had to date there online and you can learn protection tactics from the most, some of the most elite trainers in the world from the comfort of your own home. I think you'll be surprised about how much content we actually have there. Uh, It's very, very, very reasonably priced and you can upgrade your protection skills. Remember, protection is not all about the hard skills. 90% of it is all about the software, the programming, the way you see and move in the world to achieve a safer pattern of life. With that having been said, go to protectornation.com, join us there, and learn from the best of the best. Now, enjoy the show. What's up, you guys? Here we go. So stoked for this podcast episode. Um, I've got a good friend and someone that I have been wanting to do more with you know we, we we've trained he came to my house did a consultation disaster preparedness consultation um also working with him on the professional side helping me design disaster uh catastrophic emergency management plans for my clients and things like this uh this stuff is huge man and it's so appropriate with washington california oregon uh on fire oh, it's just the whole world's on fire. We got dueling, like horror hurricanes attacking Florida. Like, I don't know, hashtag heart with two A's. Anyway, so all I got to say is <laughs> it is time if we consider ourselves protectors to not just focus on the guns and the different things like that, but to really focus on what it may take to protect ourselves and our families. And for that, I have brought in um, an elite instructor uh, who's been doing this at the highest levels for a long time. Thomas Coyne, how you doing, brother? Good, man. Thanks to have you on. Uh, <laughs> thanks for having me on. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I really appreciate you having me on. And uh, to go with what you're saying there, uh, yeah, logistics. There's an old saying: logistics win the war. Hundred percent. Right? Very old saying. They, what do they say? Amateurs talk tactics, uh, and skilled people uh, talk logistics. Right. Yep. So logistics. I probably messed that saying up a little bit, uh, but it is true. It is true. So you you can be you could be the the baddest dude in the world, but when th- you you need to be uh, prepared to use that skills those those skills uh, logistically. Hundred right? percent. Yeah. You said something about a lone wolf last time we were hanging out. Was that you? I think you said something about lone wolves or uh, it was like lone wolves a dead wolf basically. <laughs> I was like, I don't know if that was me. <laughs> I was like, yeah, man, because I was talking about I, I did a, a little consultation with one of my clients and they had everything and they had all this stuff yeah. ready to go and they're you know they're they're, oh, yeah, yeah, they're say that. nice people and uh, they were like, well, what do we do if you know it hits the fan and we come out of the bunker? And I was like, you start a gang. That I was like, yeah. manpower community is going to be the ultimate asset. And there yeah, was just community first, <laughs> community first, uh, squad up. Yep. Uh, it, it take, you could take something as, uh, this, this is a, a, a little bit of an illustration I'd like to use. You could take something as simple as a pencil and ask yourself, how many people did it take to get me this pencil? Now, someone that's not so bright, right? Someone that doesn't th- doesn't think deeply enough, they'll say, well, I earned some money and I went out and I got this pencil myself. Okay. You think so, right? Did you cut down the tree? Did you own the mill? Right? Did you did you mine the lead? Right? Yeah. Did you did you own the truck that drove it to the store? Right? What about the paint on that pencil? What about the the deal that the distributor set up to get it in that store? Right? It could take a thousand people to get you one pencil. Right? We're not as we're not these uh, islands, right? We like to think we're an island. Of, some of us, right? We like to think we're an island of, awesome, of awesomeness, right? Yes. We, get a special, we feel like we can do uh, anything on our own, right? And yeah. and sometimes we forget what uh, community has done for us. You know, uh, and here in the United States, in particular, we stand on the shoulders of giants, man. Yep. A lot yep. of people sacrificed a lot to get us here. A lot to get us here. Soldiers, yeah. activists, 
you know, moms, dads, kids, right. all sacrificed a lot to make sure that that we have a society like this. Yep. So you you can't take that for granted. Mm -hmm. And when things go down, you will learn that very quickly. Yeah. One of my favorite Albert Einstein quotes that he that I butcher every single time is he says something like 100 times a day. I remind myself of the sacrifices that men and women have have given in order to get me here and that I cannot die until I've made my contribution to humanity as well. And that just adds gravity, like just simply the tech in your iPhone, the rubber that your tires on your car are made out of people. That, that was like a person's life invention multiple people's life invention to get that one yep. piece, you know together and scientists like him you know they used to burn us for saying the earth goes around the sun brother yeah bro like burn them actually <laughs> right so i i you know i uh i'm mr shadow band right no social media loves like it will let me i'm the most neutral guy in the world as far uh politically as yeah. far as my public persona right yeah, yeah. i am mr shadow band right and i can complain all the world uh all you know all as much as I want, but at least they're not burning me at the stake, right? I don't have my neighbors turning me, turning me in as a heretic, yeah, uh, and taking my house. So, hey. <laughs> so have community. So actually, there's a perfect spot for this. So we're rolling out this next year, you guys. We have rolled out. We have rolled out. It is up the Protector Nation social media platform. If you go to protectornation.com, you will see join the community. Join the community. Get in there. Be with like-minded professionals. Be with like-minded civilians. Be with people that are thinking the way you're thinking, preparing. You're going to see folks like Thomas Coyne in there, his content in there. Join us for the Protector Symposium, of which Thomas Coyne will be one of our elite instructors. That's this Protector Symposium is October 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th. Depending on which ticket you get, um, it's a weekend that will change your life and get you ready for all the Black Swan events and you know everything else they have planned for us as we prepare to go into Pandemic 2.0. Uh, at the time of this recording, but there'll be other things. If if you're watching this video after this, after the fact, I guarantee one, there'll be a protector symposium. And two, there will be things you need to prepare for that you are aware of or not aware of. These are life skills. So join us in the community. I want to encourage you to do that real quick. So just so people know who they're listening to, why they're listening, um, why don't you go into a little bit of your background um, and and uh, your pedigree with regards to the things you teach. So yeah, I am a, I'm a former wildland firefighter. Uh, back in my day, you had to qualify yourself as that, right? Because yeah, there was no it. guys to that point, right? No pun intended. Right, right. Uh, and, and a lot of my career, I was hell attacked. So if you think you feel hot showing up in a fire engine, try showing up in a helicopter, right? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and uh, I was a ho uh, hoist rescue and repeller. So the cool thing about helicopters is they can hover, right? So you don't have to land. You know, uh, all this mountainous terrain and forested terrain and stuff. Uh, we could we had a two hundred foot repel capability. Uh, I was on four hundred eight and five two seven. Uh, for those in the know, uh, and when I got uh, for you old school guys, if anybody is hell attack or whatever, listening to this, uh, the old man hired me on 527 when they were a hell of shot crew. Uh, since then, I have uh, <clears throat> started a survival school and my focus is turning you into your own first responder. And because I don't offer survival themed experiences, I offer real world survival training. Um, every single branch of the United States military has trained with me. And you know, people will lie about stuff like that, sadly, right? But uh, I have letters of appreciation and awards from every single branch of the military um, uh, on my site. You know, not just the military, police, um, the first uh, cartel hunting teams from the California DOJ that would uh, go look in, in the woods for the cartel growers and stuff. I taught them back in 2012. Uh, so, yeah, and I am... Uh, I'm a former fireline EMT as well, so I'd be the main uh, medical response for a lot of these large wildland fires that you would see. They'd fly me in if anybody went down. Uh, um, so hoist rescue, uh, technical ropes rescue, confined space rescue, various forms of hazmat. Uh, of course, the EMT thing. I'm an instructor certifier in, a, in many disciplines, uh, wilderness first aid, emergency oxygen, advanced bleeding control, uh, BLS, uh, you know, which is CPR pro um all that stuff uh sartec 3 
uh, squad leader back in the fire days and all that. So, I mean, there's too many, when you start doing that stuff, you get too many certifications to mention, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but that that's just a little about me. And we still, you know, I've had DOD contracts and stuff like that too, right? And we still work, uh, right now we still work with uh, U.S. Army Aviation uh, out of Fort Rucker. Uh, they fly guys out to come to my uh, urban disaster, my remote survival and counter criminal exploitation. Yeah, 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 lightweight, lightweight. You know I'm, I'm sure somebody there, but did you train Space Force? Yeah, I, mean, like, anyway. well, I was on the rescue team for the first civilian space launch. Yeah, I, yeah. my best of words. I love it. It's yeah. actually the Forrest Gump moment for me. Yeah, uh, the one I got my award. Uh, <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, but yeah, the, I have I have an award from the X Prize team uh, because I was uh, the helicopter rescue for the first civilian space launch. I, I mean, I was joking, but this is awesome. <laughs> <That's> awesome. <laughs> we know how to pick them. We know how to pick them. You can learn from him sure. and seven other elite instructors at the Protector Symposium. And then, of course, this is going to be exposure to tactics, exposure to training. You need to follow these guys and get trained in the way. There's, I mean, uh, I mean, there's so much I could go into. We've seen supply chains, we've disruption. We've seen power grids go down. We've seen um, natural disasters. We've seen lockdowns. Um, and so learning how to survive, man, this is so important. You, you, this is like your own insurance policy, essentially. So uh, now that they know why they're listening, let's get into some of this stuff, man. Like, like Lahaina, you know, um, yeah. what did, what, I, uh, what I, I took it down and reposted it, but um, because <laughs> these are sensitive issues, right. Yes. But I posted something about that the day it happened mm -hmm. and I reposted it because sadly, everything I said was true. Yeah. Um, you got to forgive me. This kind of thing gets me fired up. Yeah, man. All of us. It should. Yeah. This is what I spent. Uh, you know, and what got me here was making sure this kind of stuff doesn't happen. And uh, I saw I saw these kind of failures uh, many times as a wildland firefighter. Uh, my my helicopter crew. Um, so so people know the U.S. Forest Service. It owns like 48% of California. So like 48% of California is federal land. Mm. Uh, so it's not just the state that fails us when these fires uh, erupt out of the mountains. It is the federal government as well. And they do not own their own firefighting helicopters. They lease them for five, six months at a time for millions of dollars. Uh -huh. And you don't know what that crew is going to show up with the helicopter. So they forgot to refuel our helicopter one time after a basic flight. Mm -hmm. And what was at the, uh, at the time was the second biggest fire in California's history. The Indians, uh, something complex was the Indians fire that it got turned into another complex. They ran, they were the, supposed to be the initial attack. The first on scene, they ran out of gas on the way. Yeah. Look, on a 40 minute flight, they ran out of gas, had to set down on the side of the freeway and, and wait for a fuel tender to come. Logistics from when was and they couldn't be dropped, they couldn't drop water, right? I've so had I've seen happen, man. I've, it, it's sad, it. but I've seen these. I was yeah. trying to save a guy's life in the middle of a combat zone after we got blown up, and they flew us the wrong chopper, and we were doing everything we could to resuscitate the guy. And the chop the bird lands, and they're like, Oh, there's the wrong bird, and then they had to fly away. And fortunately, we were and fortunately, we were able to keep him uh, alive for the second bird. But these logistical things have to be done. They have to be done, man. Anyway, sorry, just yeah. really brought me back there. Kills yeah, me. no, yeah, yeah. And, and it sucks, right? Because uh, it, it means people lose their homes. And what we see, um, I, there's a lot of, um, I like a good conspiracy theorist, let me tell you that. Yep, but yep. There's some real um, crappy ones out there that are trying to get clout off this. Yep. And um, right. And and saying all kinds of dumb stuff. I heard the, the Marines got in a gunfight with FEMA and all this. That's right. There's all kinds of silliness. Right. It, But it doesn't it doesn't take that mm -hmm. when you have people that don't give a damn running things. It, it, you don't need a, a, a conspiracy. Right. And this was a failure in every way. So here in PG&E, wow. uh, my first fire station was in uh, uh, Paradise, California, which is now gone. Uh, one of my last uh, fire stations, uh, it was in Big Sur, uh, the NAC, Nascimento, right? And that's burned yeah. down as well. Okay? Wow. Uh, and a lot of these fires are started by PG&E, right? 
So in California, we had our utility uh, was found responsible for wiping out whole towns year after year. And while Paradise was still burning the deadliest fire in California's history, or, or, or like 84 dead, right? While it was still smoldering in the mop up phases, the California legislator passed a law limiting the liability to PG&E. Okay. Limiting the so, liability to yeah, yeah, yeah. So they can only be sued for so much. It makes me how they do these things, man. The conflict of interest, like I, even in the medical industry, I'm like, there should be some accountability for these things. Oh, what are you doing? Exactly. This isn't the business anymore. This is just especially in the medical industry. Well, and in Lahaina, what a lot of people don't know is they they didn't just have old power poles like here. It was bare. It was bare wire. Bare so, wire, fucking copper, just copper wire, naked, hanging between fucking poles. Okay, sorry, I'm trying not to swear. Yeah. So. Just, just bare wire. If you're an electrician, look this up. Bare wire on old leaning poles. Okay, so you don't need a space laser. I, I'm sure that technology exists, but if you have miles of bare copper wire hanging behind, uh, hanging on 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 these leaning poles, it's only a matter of time. Okay. Yeah. And the thing is, just like the bark beetle stuff in California. They had all kinds of uh, issues with their uh, environment there. You know, they had a uh, bad drought for, you know, maybe a decade now. Right. right? And invasive grasses, things that people sounded the alarm on. Right. And nobody listened. Right. Because that, you, you know, your tax money should only be used for these guys' bodies. Right. It shouldn't be used to make sure you're OK. Right. right. So these bare wires on these hundred year old poles blew over in hurricane winds, caught all this invasive grass on fire that people had been trying to remove for decades, right? And uh, with, with those kind of winds, with that kind of stuff, um, this is what happens. And, uh, you know, probably somewhat inept first responders, right? So th that's another thing. You know, um, I've served with some people that had no business being firefighters. They had yeah. no business. They wanted they wanted a sticker on their car, right? Yeah. They wanted that license plate. They wanted the firefighter discount at Disneyland, right? right. But when st stuff hit the fan, where they were the, the they were the guys that ran away from the sound of gunfire. There's the two, two types of people in our world, right? Yeah. They either run toward the sound of gunfire or away, mm -hmm. right? And 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 I'm not afraid. I'm older now, so I don't. You know, I'm in my 40s. I don't care. Yeah. Right? So sure. two three people. Yeah, uh, that run away from the sound of gunfire, right? Chiefs, yeah. kids, captains, kids, all that, right? There's and, always and pretenders, man. We There's saw with these police pretenders. blocking, blocking people. I thought that was insane when I first heard it. I was like, "Oh, this is a dumb conspiracy theory," and the, and it turned out to be true. Yeah, I've seen all the videos on that. Right? Yeah, no, I've seen videos on that too, man. I'm just kind of like, sounds like they were very ill prepared, very ill organized. It sounds like there were a lot of breakdowns. I always wonder, you know, I think a lot of things we see in the media nowadays, people are like, they're so stupid. How could they pass a law that, you know, let, gives criminals the upper hand? And how could they pass a law that victimizes these these people or good people? Or, uh, yeah, and I'm kind of like, I don't know if they're stupid, you know? Like, I, I, I never assume that someone's stupid, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know anything, but I see a trend. And, I, and it worries me. It makes me want to say, you guys need to take your safety and security into your own hands. And you need to yep. be competent and formidable at protecting the things you love because you can't depend on these agencies to do it for you. You cannot. And, and that's what we're trying to do here with the Protector Nation and with what we're trying to do. So so anyways, continue. I cut you off. As far as Lahaina, you know, you see a situation like this, you know, um, what I mean, I guess what could people do to prepare? What what, um, you know, what do you what are your thoughts, I guess? So uh, these things don't, even with the line of these things don't happen out of the blue. There's people um, sounding the alarm on yeah. this for a long time. So uh, if you are, if you if, if you were in a preparedness, um, it didn't it didn't come as a surprise if you're paying attention to these kinds of things. So you have time to prepare. Um, you don't not necessarily have time to much time to react, right? Because right? it goes down. Sometimes it goes down all at once. People getting roasted in their cars. I mean. Sending the kids home while parents are at work, parents can't get to their houses. There's so much, you know. Um, well, I, I call that disaster synergy. Okay. Disaster it's like synergy. the chaos that starts and it just. Yeah, and, uh, it, it, it's a snowball effect. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So you have years of drought, 
You have inept leadership. Uh, who knows what was on the mind of the first responders? I've served on some t absolutely t terrible fire crews. Yeah. Okay. Who, know, who knows if they were drilled and ready to go, right? Because mm. initially the fire was called contained, right? Mm. Uh, you, you have the bare wire. You have the hurricane winds, right? So all those things add up, add up. And when it hits the fan, it makes it harder and harder and harder. Mm. Yeah, it does. It takes on a life of its own. Yeah. And that's why you have to form. Uh, it's sad to say now I I'm, I, I like to think of myself as a, a bit of a patriot. Right. But we cannot count on the powers that be. Yeah. Right. From Katrina to Lahaina to Paradise and California to all, all these things. Right. We have this good old boy network still going on in the United States where our friends of friends of friends is how we get power. Right. Uh, it's not as much as a meritocracy as it should be in terms of in entrepreneurship. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. but in, in, in terms of, uh, power and influence, uh, in the government and government agencies, then it, it's, it's a good old boy system still. And mm -hmm. so we have, you know, evil and stupid working together. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. A hundred percent, man. I agree. Okay. Now, how can someone, I guess, how could someone prepare for something like this and or see something like this coming or their channels they should be listening to? Like basically, like you, as a civilian, you kind of have to run your own risk assessment on your life. Like, OK, I live in Southern California. What types of things, you know, yeah. I'm looking so, at I, I would uh, recommend to anybody listening to this. Look up the Cajun Navy. OK, uh, that's an incredible, incredible not uh, an actual organization like it's loosely affiliated people. But now. So since Katrina went down and those people were left high and dry, right? Yeah. Uh, the the, the, the those, real quick, why well, send how many millions, maybe even billions to, to the Ukraine? I'm just salty, man. I'm just yeah. salty. I'm okay. trying not to be salty, but like Americans got seven hundred dollars. That gotta be a good. That can't be real. That can't be real. And we're still sending money to fuzzy sweatshirt guy. I mean, I love everybody, but I love my family. You know what I mean? Like, it just a, comes a time when you got to look at these people's actions and we're sending money to the laundromat instead of just taking care of our people. Like, for, I just don't. Yeah, I, well, so once once we were, we were failed in Katrina, those good old boys down there, yeah. well, those two types of good old boys, right? They decided uh, they're not going to let that go down again. Now when we see floods, Texas, Louisiana, all through the panhandle and everything there, now the Cajun Navy shows up. These guys show up in their in their shallow draft boats, right? And they and they make sure the old people don't get killed, right? They make sure the old folks in the old in the old folks' home get out, right? They make sure the kids get out. And you know, in Lahaina, yeah, there were uh, old folks' homes. There was retirement homes burned down. These old people burned to death because no one came for them. OK, and 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 like you mentioned, kids were home from school that day and the mayor won't answer. The, so the, the 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 mayor there makes me sick as well. Um, I don't you know, I don't know this guy, but seeing how he's been handling questions is uh, he'll just go go silent or shut meetings down. Right. Mm -hmm. They can't answer how many kids die. They don't want that number out. Right. Right. Um, this is not the kind of leadership we want or need in these here United States, right? Yeah. So you, you so anyway, like the Cajun Navy, you need we, you need to start organizations like this uh, in your in your area. Yeah. And these disasters are pre predictable. We know what kind of disasters hit California, right? right. If you're in, you live in Tornado Alley, you know what kind of disaster, disasters hit Tornado Alley, right? So you need to get with your community out, outside of the local government response because we don't know what they're going to do. We yeah. don't know. You know, cert teams are great. Get on the cert team. Volunteer for the Red Cross. Uh, volunteer for Team Rubicon. Team Rubicon is my jam. Really? You know, that is an incredible, incredible organization to volunteer a group. A former, mostly former military and for, uh, first responders. Yeah. Uh, and and volunteer with them for sure. If you if you really want to uh, serve and you want to be outside the box, maybe you don't like the Red Cross or whatever. Uh, go ahead with Team Rubicon, man. Okay, uh, they, they will get you boots on the ground in any major disaster in these here United States. They're in Lahaina, they're in California with the uh, flooding in Palm Springs, all that. So join organizations like that and start community preparedness groups where you live. Get with friends, get with family, get with neighbors. Yeah. Okay, 
Uh, there's the powers that be. They want you to see a, a a sign for whatever candidate in your neighbor's yard, right? A blue sign or a red sign. They want you to hate your neighbor, right? right. Anybody that tells you to hate your neighbor, man, that's that, that's that, those people are your enemy, right? Yep. And oh, I know they have a different belief than you. They're the left. They're the right, and all this, mm -hmm. and we'll demonize each other, right? So mm -hmm. what do we see now? Everyone on the left is a is a pedophile, and right. everyone on the right is a Nazi. Sure. Yeah. Right. And what do good Americans do to pedophiles and Nazis? Right. They kill. Right. right. So uh, that so th they're trying to dehumanize. Right. All of us, and right? on that, man, and, and what I what I was talking about on my thing just yesterday is on, on Instagram is all we really have is each other, you guys. So and when you start noticing that they're sowing divisiveness in every category they can come up with, medical divisiveness, racist divisiveness, gender divisiveness, love, everything they can come up with, political divisiveness, literal physical six feet away from other people divisiveness. They're trying to take away the power that we have, which is connectivity and community and attacking the, the nuclear family home and all in the media and all the cool stuff, like all of it's under attack. And so we really, that's why I started the social media platform for the Protector Nation. We really need to remember, dude, Lahaina, these emergencies, what do you see? People have to come together and they have to help each other. And big government and these people who are out here talking about all the latest problems that so divisiveness are not, the they're not delivering. And they're just separating us. When these things happen, you're, it's going to be all about your neighborhood. It's going to be all about your community, you know, and, and that's huge, man. That might be the yeah. title of this podcast. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah, and, and we we gotta remember we uh, we can't really engage in hero worship either, right? We can't use uh, one or two figureheads, right? So if you see people that are uh, all this Biden and Trump, Biden and Trump, Biden and Trump, these are just two two guys. It's it's two guys. There's a whole system behind both of these men, right? There's yeah. a whole system uh that we that we need to look at there's you yeah. know uh what is it uh 537 members of the house of representatives and 100 senators right mm -hmm. yeah and, and and people forget the the legislator is where the the majority of the power is right yep. your city your your city legislator your state legislator you know california is the fourth biggest economy in the world if it was a country I'm there's more at. the economy of California, right? There's more money in California than Saudi Arabia. Wow. Okay? So people people need to get that through their heads, right? <laughs> wow. So our state legislator is extremely powerful. Extremely powerful. These men and women are courted by a lot of stupid and evil, right? Yeah, and and evil. they will join together. They will join together to get theirs, right? And make sure you don't get yours, right? Yeah. So the 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 representatives, right? Not just figureheads, right? Yeah. It's easy to just, you know, that guy's, hang, that guy's out to dry, hang a Biden, hang a Trump out to dry, right? Yeah. Uh, which we see is being done. Right. You know, we go act on a president. Insane, right? But uh anyway. You know, you, you can rape 10,000 kids, but, uh, you know, in a church and they won't RICO act you as you move priests around the world. Right. Yeah. But uh, they'll RICO act the president. Yeah. You know? And you so, find uh, graves and nothing happens. But anyways, but, I'm too political there. But yeah, <laughs> you can yeah. Um, you show up and, and, and uh, you know, show up, vote, hold it, go out on the street and hold a sign, man. Yeah. Um, you know, when I was when I was a young guy. You know, because I'm I'm a, I'm a bit older, but uh, when I was a real young guy, that was that separated me from uh, the group. Right, uh, activism wasn't big. Mm -hmm. Activism wasn't big. A lot of this stuff wasn't big. Right, it was all conspiracy theories, all that. You know, and now that you can be black holed, now that we see COINTELPRO is back with social media companies, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so that that started back in in, in the '60s. You know, there would be uh leaders of uh pro protest movements anti-vietnam war and all that which we know now you know was was not not the best idea these kids would not get the job they want they would not get in the graduate program they wanted and uh their all their professors would would be standoffish with them yeah. and they would wonder why you know i'm just you know i they you know they're they're a students they work hard they have a great social network, but they were doing a little bit of protesting. And it turns out, you know, uh, federal agencies would go 
to the college and say, this guy's a troublemaker, right? And go to a different uh, corporate organization, say, this guy's a troublemaker, right? Just just young guys, uh, uh, you know, trying to protest, make a difference with their country, right? Yeah. And, uh, and, and single them out. And, and, and we see that again, it's been recycled uh, with all the social media stuff. Right. Yeah. And, and all that. And uh, <clears throat> so uh, people need to realize that the signal is being is being suppressed. Right. You need to talk to your neighbors. Yeah. Uh, you need you need to you need to do the best you can to be, let me say, almost congenial. Right. Yeah. Don't focus. So signal versus noise. Right. Don't focus on the noise. Mm-hmm. Don't focus on the noise. Focus on the signal. Yeah. Uh, you know, propping the country up propping your neighborhood up, propping your family up, right? Uh, be setting a good example, right, for for your family. Because uh, there is a, there, there's a lot of people that want to shut that down. Yeah, right? 100%. Again, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's think about, um, so if you're a civilian right now and you have your family and you want to really start looking at maybe what's coming, different things that, um, how would you, If you just had someone come to your office and they're like, hey, uh, I know there's stuff coming. You know, maybe I live in Southern California. Um, How can I start being prepared? Where do I start? What types of things should I be looking at doing? So basically, I focus on the uh, eight primary needs uh, to temporarily replace. We're not going to, you know, you're not going to replace society overnight, right? right? If things go down, right? Uh, eight primary needs that the that the grid provides, right? Food, medicine, uh, power generation, water, healthcare, uh, security, uh, hygiene, transportation. These are things that will make you. Know, they will make themselves clear in any grid down scenario how how necessary they are. Wow. So if you live in a place like so the protector symposium is going to be in Arizona this year, yep. right? So if you if you live there, uh the power going down uh can make your house just uninhabitable, right? Now, if you don't have AC, yep. and it's 120 out, the ha- inside the house because the greenhouse effect, like a baby in a car, right? Yep. Maybe 130 in the house. You may be better off sitting under a tree in the shade, yeah, right? in that house without electricity, right? So electricity is a need, right? So I I teach people how to make their own quick solar power generator. I I watched a bunch of videos on it that made it seem so complicated. And I reduced it down, reduced it down. And I was like, wait a second. I think I just need these three things and and, and (laughs) and and clips. Yeah. And and boom, right? And you can make a solar power generator that can power your fridge and stuff for like brownouts here in California that you can transport in a little wheeled bin like like I use uh, for about a quarter of the price what they will sell you in the store, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Hygiene, uh, I'm sure it you have- it to me when he came and did the consultation at the house. It's stupid simple and simplicity is the, is the ultimate sophistication, man. Less breaking points, 100%, man. This is exactly. life, life-saving stuff. And you know, hygiene, uh is is critical as well uh, a lot of disaster zones things like uh you know a guy died from flesh eating bacteria uh and, and a fire cleanup in nor in norcal mm. right so infections are actually a big thing in disaster zones huge uh so hygiene is a big deal uh and i'm sure you know what a wag bag is right oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so things like wag bags are out there being able to yeah. get your get your feces away from where you're living, so you don't end up with infection and and um, getting getting you and your family sick. Yeah, and exactly. It's exactly, it's a big thing right. in, in disaster zones and and third world countries where we have, uh, you know, the system the system failing as a whole, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, so if people want to if people want to see what it looks like when society fails, go do a study on Haiti. Do a yep. study on Haiti, and yep. you know. I don't blame just the Haitians because there's, you know, when you have the world's biggest superpowers uh, arming the worst people in a country, right, and separating people, right, you have nut jobs here that'll watch a video on YouTube and go shoot a place up. Yeah. Imagine what would happen if they were, if the world's biggest superpowers were vying to arm the biggest nut jobs in your community, right? 
Yeah. Th- this is a thing. This this yeah. is a thing. So Haiti is a very, very good case study. A yeah. very good case study. That's actually in 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 uh the the her, the uh, earthquake there and I think it was 2008 that's actually where team Rubicon came out of to circle mm-hmm. back to that uh but yeah it's a good uh, case study of, of what happens when society breaks down yeah uh you know it's it, it, it it's good it's good for people to to look at things like that yeah. See the, wanna... the theory, uh, things like that the diseases going through the lack of clean yeah. water uh the the roving gangs competing gangs on the streets right we don't want that here we don't want that here and anyone and and one and also go on missions trips to some of these areas you know go in and see it for yourself go take a few days take a weekend you know there's some spots in mexico's and churches that go down there and stuff like that that now make sure you have your security right when you do these things but yeah you can go and see these things. It changes a lot of a lot of things. And this is also one of the reasons why, you know, Ed Calderon is going to be talking about urban disruption, you know. So something does happen and the organized uh, gangs in your area start to do what they do. It turns into a warlord type environment. How does you and your family get with your neighborhood and be disruptive so that they leave your neighborhood alone? They come to the gate and there's six dudes that are standing there. They're like, hey. You're not coming down this 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 alleyway. Go to the next one, or you're gonna have to earn your way down this alleyway because this is a kill box behind me. <laughs> you know, and, and people are able to protect themselves. But anyways, um, so you were saying the eight. There's eight things you guys need to be able to sustain in order to protect your families during these times. And figuring out how to approach those things is what will increase your survivability. It's true. And you can make it as grand or as small and portable and simple as you want. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't take all the money in, in the world to be yeah. prepared, right? Okay. Uh, you know what? Walmart has an incredible survival section now. If you go to Walmarts now, uh, even in California. Um, it- I, if, if, so I do a lot in Alaska. The, the, the Walmart in Alaska will blow your mind, bro. It, really? it, the Walmart in Alaska is better than any gun store in California. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> insane it's absolutely insane yeah alaska is one of the last uh free states man you can um it's a it's it's a really amazing place uh as far as far as that's concerned that you know they have ranked choice voting and you can still have a 44 on your on your car seat as you drive down the road and you don't need a special permit for it right Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, have red stripe laws. So if you have a DUI, you got a red stripe in your license. You can't buy booze anywhere, but they also have the best dive bars in the world, right? <laughs> you know, it's it's an amazing, it's a it's a really amazing place. Uh, and, and I recommend if, if you get a chance, you know, if you need, if you're, um, you probably have a lot of veterans and first responders and stuff like that, guys that have seen a lot, done a lot. Yeah, yeah. You know, your head, uh, Alaska is a good road trip, man. That's good. Fly no. in. Get a little ride, do a little Alaska Alaska road trip, man, and be able to clear your head. It's really and good. at some point, I have to go through your indigenous Alaskan survival uh, gut check <laughs> course, man. My, you saw the fish Daniel got, right? Dude, I did. It was monstrous, man. It was 30, like, 30 pound king salmon, speared it. Golly. With a sharp stick we carved with a knife. Yes, yes. I, I might put the pictures in here as, if he's good with it. That's amazing, man. That's survival at its best. And uh, I guess let's approach let's approach bugging in and bugging out, man. What would you kind of say? Bugging in, bugging out 101. This is kind of what you're going to be talking about at the symposium. Yep. Um, how should someone psychologically approach that? What are some of the things they should be thinking about? So you got you got to look at uh, security and viability. Uh, should I stay or should I go? Right. Uh, security and viability of staying versus going. Is your domicile intact? Um, is fire going to run through the neighborhood? Uh, so with earthquakes, there's a lot of secondary exa- disasters. Right. Uh, sewage lines break. Gas lines break. Uh, the house next to you, may, you know, in Big Bear, in that snowed in situation, houses were exploding. We're exploding. There's several houses exploded, okay, because of gas. Because of gas, the 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 snow packed down their gas pipes, right? And here's the thing: if you do snow shelters, you know you can't plug up the entrance, right? Because if you plug up the entrance with snow, like you think, oh, I'll, I'll cover the entrance to my uh, igloo or my Quincy is what we do in survival, right? With a big snowball, right? You will suffocate because it does not breathe, 
right? You have to have a ventilation hole. So the snow weighed on the gas pipes. Gas pipes broke a little bit. There was no breathability. The, the gas couldn't escape and houses exploded. Wow. Gnarly. And just right? so are you, are you, did the house next to you blow up and take half your roof off? Right. So th these are things that you're, you're going to have to put in a place, right? You, ha you have to think about when you stay and when you go. And when you go, there's a lot of things to think about as well. So in the high end of the roads were blocked, right? Mm -hmm. uh, by police, you know, and uh, we, I showed you a secondary uh, transportation grid in California. Yep. If you remember that. Well, I won't mention, I'm not going to say exactly what it is because I want it to still exist. Yeah. If you come to the protector symposium, we'll go over it. Uh but, you know, for, there's amazing four-wheel drive vehicles now that you can buy off the line. Yep. So uh, the Dodge has a nearly 30-mile-to-the-gallon full-size quad cab truck that is diesel. So you can make biodiesel. We can't make gasoline. But if you have some vegetable oil and some lye, you can make biodiesel at home. You know, the gas station may be gone, but you, vegetable oil will be around, right? Uh, that you comes to skid plate right over away. the transmission and over the gas tank. Uh, have, you know, they have these uh, like 27 gallon gas tanks on them, right? And so you have over a 500 mile range, uh, high mileage diesel with four wheel drive and skid plate protection right off the line. Same thing with uh, the Jeep, uh, what they call Trailhawks. So mm -hmm. you can get a Jeep Compass. Uh, so, so the thing about these smaller SUVs, so first off, SUV handles uh, a lot better uh, and especially at speed because the the bed of the pickup trucks right there's no weight on those back wheels and that can mess with you uh when you get stuck i don't know if you've ever sat <laughs> stood up on the back of a pickup truck on the on the bumper shaking it while the wheels are spinning trying to get it out right yeah. because we're putting weight on those back wheels so good old boys will know what i'm talking about that are yeah. listening to this, right? mm -hmm. so the, the suvs will move a little bit better and these small things like the compass can get down smaller roads like Jeep trails and such, right? And you can you can get for like 20 something grand, right? Which is cheap for a car nowadays, right? The the options. It'll come with skid plates, four-wheel drive, a little bit lifted, probably good in the water. Uh you, you, you can go at speed, right? Uh real off-road vehicles that are nice inside, but they're nice inside though. So for your family, you still have the rear view cameras, leather interior all that lane change protection and all that stuff right but you can get some quality off-road stuff right off the line now you don't have to build it yourself right yeah. which requires certain expertise and knowledge and all that and i recommend if you're more than a, a one vehicle household right you have a car wife have a car have one of those have yeah. something like that right because you may have to go you, you have to may have to go around barriers right you may have to go end up on the freeway the freeways exactly. can very probably be gridlocked. Oh, yeah. yeah. Our freeways are already a parking lot in California. They already turned the parking lots in California. A lot of of evacuation. Yeah. So, so, so have, some, have something like that uh, to be able to get out. And uh, you need to learn convoy tactics. Uh -huh, right? yeah. you, need, you need to learn how to... Uh, so if if you're leaving with your family, your friends, right? You need to you need you need radios if the cell if the cells go down. A couple uh, motor rollers in each car, right? You need to you need to know uh, your following distance between each vehicle so people don't get in between. You need to know like the the last guy lane changes first, right? Right. The first, the guy in front is the one that recognizes the the need for a lane change. He, must, he, he may signal first, right? Yep. But the guy in the back goes first to block and clear that lane over, right? So mm -hmm. we did that in the fire department. Uh, you don't stop uh, too close to the bumper of a vehicle in front of right. you. Right. You know, right. If we're at a red light or something like that, you need two or three car lengths mm -hmm. in case you need to get around or you need to push through yep. the cars in front of you, right? Yep. Um, you know, things like that. And, and, it, it, and you can even get to, you know, <laughs> phone books and door panels right <laughs> yeah 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 a little bit of uh a little bit of redneck armor on that mm -hmm. on that bad boy right oh, man. you know the stuff man that's what's up yes sir absolutely man and i mean these are the types of skills that um that separate people during these times of emergency you know these base well things we take for granted from learning in the military but i mean this is why I say it's more than just a job. It's a lifestyle, you know, like going through these courses, getting this knowledge, you know, and, and, and giving your family someone, you know, I got the biggest compliment in the world for my wife the other day when she was like, 
how do you know all this stuff? And like, I don't think I'm a smart guy. I know how like stupid I am. So I keep studying. I just keep studying, you know, and at some point you kind of have a little bit of, of, of a body of information uh, that you, they can, they can, that's valuable is you're, you're making yourself more valuable to yourself and your family and the people around you. And that's it, that you need to have that value, you know, yeah. um, that's good stuff, man. So when it comes to bugging in and bugging out, really, it's like, um, where can I survive? Can I survive at this house? It's, it's, it's really a risk assessment. You know, it, can- it really is, it, you know, is, is your domicile, is your domicile secure? Uh, and if it's not, do you, do you have a way to leave and do you have some place to go? Right. And then, and, and, and you can form a, a mobile camp real easy. Uh, I'll be showing you at, at, at everybody at, at the symposium, you know, how you can just open your trunk. You have a, a, a full canvas tent, right. That you can stand up in, uh, it holds up the wind, snow, things like that. Or with a little solar power generator to power your stuff. You can even have uh, climate control in there. Uh, wow. power your communications all that uh as well uh so you can have a portable so you don't have to go stay on a cot in a gym <laughs> during these uh evacuations yeah right? which which i really don't i i wouldn't want for my family no right? the stadium at katrina yeah right? all the rapes and assaults and things that were going on there yeah right? but a bit of a hellscape oh, we don't want that right so you can make your own portable camp you can have your own uh, friends and family there you can have your own security there yeah uh, yeah and uh we'll, we'll be showing that uh at the symposium so uh, if you don't have a place to go you can make a place to go you get to a secure area uh yeah. you find find a, a flat spot just like setting up a fire camp right find a flat spot and uh you set up camp right 100%. So the, the, these things uh can be done you know yeah. we can't always uh bug in it'd be nice but we you know with in california you know, fires and earthquakes are the, are the big things, right? And those uh, are, you know, those destroy domiciles. So you have to leave sometimes quickly, yeah. right? So to be able to grab a couple of these wheeled crates, uh, throw, them, throw them in the truck, take off. You know, you have uh, at least photocopies of everybody's uh, uh, documentation, right? For any kind of checkpoint issues. And uh, you can set up your own uh, little camp that'll be better than staying on, on a cot in a gym uh in the local area right yeah. so you can, you can make your own little neighborhood basically any and yeah your own community start a gang hey any uh any thoughts on how much time people have after an environmental or after disasters like this i mean we have so many things on the horizon they're talking about the collapse of the dollar maybe that's a slow burn but then boom a huge fire goes off no so so catastrophe happens mm-hmm. fallout happens what do you think? Is it a 24 hour turn and burn? Is it a 72 hour? People are in shock for the first 24 hours. What are your thoughts on getting someone, getting their family out? Yeah, that's the thing is um, you may not have a place to go back to. Like, you know, the is gone, right? This ineptitude, this hubris, mm-hmm. uh, this evil and stupid, right? So uh, screw the, you know, <laughs> forget the environment right oh it's all it's all liberal bs right but then you see all the drought and the invasive species right if you can't take care of the earth god gave you man yeah. i don't know what it's you don't want clean air clean water i don't i don't know what to say to you yeah you, know, you, want, you want kids getting leukemia from benzene exposure which is in the air at these gas stations and stuff right i don't know what to say to you right yeah. so you don't take if you you don't take care of your environment you don't you don't you don't show up to vote you don't protest uh you don't you don't hit take to the streets when necessary you don't prepare you know now it's not these people's fault but again this is a this is a disaster synergy right and and these people have no place to go back to it's gone right it's right. gone and a lot of them their families are gone too yeah. right so um it, it could be a whole new start right, right. So uh, that's another thing, uh, having a savings, right? Right, And maybe having some bank accounts that aren't necessarily in the U.S. for a few thousand here and there, they can yeah. access maybe having a more stable crypto like uh, that's easy to exchange, like uh, forget Bitcoin. And also, I bought Bitcoin at $90. My okay, man. 2012 man. during the free crisis. Oh. So, so I'm I'm very familiar with crypto. Uh, 
Now, though, you, you would go with something like XRP because banks are using this. Mm. Okay, it's, it's, it's much like uh, SDRs. Mm. Uh, and, and the price is a little bit more stable, right? Okay. So having having some a little bit of currency that you can convert, exchange that is out of the hands of the power that be, the powers yep. that be, right? Uh, a little bit of an insurance policy yep. um, uh, will be good in case you don't have anything to go back to, right? Yep. Because you never know what's going to happen with these insurance companies, right? Yep. So in California, State Farm will no longer insure your house. Okay, so in California, they're moving these these. Insurance companies are moving out because they see the risk. They see that all a lot of all all of it's preventable. All this stuff's preventable. They they didn't care about the bark beetle, and now you have all this bug kill forest, and now you know you have whole towns burning down. Right? They didn't care in the Heine about bare wire. Right? But the risk assessments for these insurance companies, the risk assessors, they see it. Yeah. Right? So and in Florida, you can't get insurance anymore. Uh, from you can't get home insurance anymore unless it's through the state. So the state had to because all the insurance companies moved out. Wow. So they now the it's a, a, is so high. Now the, the yeah because the danger was so high. Uh, the the state uh, had to uh, work with these companies to do these extremely high priced insurance plans. Right. So you don't even know if your insurance will cover you at the end of the day. Right. right. So it, it's nice to have, right? But um, and you could say sue them or whatever, but lawsuits are very, very, very expensive, right? Uh, so having some money saved, having it, uh, mo- having the the portable money, is a thing, okay? Mm-hmm. So money that you can move with a click in your phone, um, that people people will take. Money that's outside of the hands of the powers of the BBC in Canada, they tried to seize people's bank accounts for protesting. Exactly. And the, and the actual the crypto agencies uh, said no, right? Because they were outside of those regulatory bodies. Love it. Love it. Right? These huge survival considerations, man. Yeah. So that, having portable money that is outside the hands of the power that be, powers that be, so they can't just freeze your money because you're, you know, you said the wrong thing. Yeah. Right. Or you protested the wrong way, right? I, I try not to criticize other people's activism, mm-hmm. right? As American, because we need because right? that's we need, me here. Yeah, and we but and we do we need we need more people to stand against these things. Whether they're creating companies to stand against it, whether they're getting into politics themselves, whether they're just simply saying, uh, "We're not going to let you. We're just not going to let you put a fifteen-minute city here in Lahaina now." You're just not going to do it. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> you know, like yeah, there's, I mean, these people are getting robo calls already, right? They'll, you know, they'll get that, uh, uh, what is it, 808 down there is all of Hawaii, the area code, right? I think so. And I'm, I'm sure people, because these robo callers, they don't know that that area code is for all of Hawaii, right? So I'm sure even if you live, you know, wherever in Hawaii, right, you're, you're getting these robo calls, mm-hmm. right? Because uh, the predators are there, man. They're, they're, they're coming in right away. They're, they're gonna they're gonna get you when you're at your lowest, when you're at your most emotional, when you're at your most desperate, and uh, they're gonna offer them pennies on the dollar a lot of times, right? And uh, and some people have no choice but to take it, right? And then they'll resell it to big developers. If you if you if you can't sell directly to a big developer, these little predatory agencies will will get it from you and they'll resell it uh, at a profit to these uh, big developers. So well, who knows? Who knows what what it's going to look like there now? Who knows? Uh, the, the, a lot of eyes are on it now, so a lot of activism is on it now. So maybe maybe that'll prevent it uh, the worst from happening there. We'll see. We'll see what, but it's definitely going to be something we're all watching to see what happens next in a number of places. What do you think? What is the hardest lesson you've learned uh, in your time doing survival stuff? What is the hardest lesson you've learned about survival? Anything that can go wrong will. Anything that can go wrong will. And you know what? Bad things happen to good people. Mm. You can't engage in magical thinking and think, I'm a good person. My mom or dad or my brother is a good person, right? Because they won't happen to them because it will. Yeah. Yeah. And and we lose people. Yeah. Right? So, um, you know, the the best laid, you know, there's an old saying, you want to make God laugh, tell him what you're doing tomorrow. 
<laughs> it's just real, man. This is all the same in the private security industry. It's all the exact same stuff, man. That's yeah. the truth, man. Uh, I mean, everyone's got a plan to get punched in the face, man. You know, yeah. and so you- to make sure to make sure that you are ready, because uh, yeah. when the worst happens, uh, it, it, it hits hard, and yeah. it, it, you you want you want a. Um, a cushion to land on, right? You know, you want to go for it. a soft landing is nice. Yeah, yeah, because we all you know, got all men. What would you say is the um, your proudest moment in this <laughs> survival game? Um, I got a uh, a call from a, a Marine Corps colonel back in the day, right? And they ended up having me teach ten days at the uh, uh, Bridgeport, the Marine Corps Mountain Warfare Training Center. Yeah. I know. And- <laughs> Yeah, I, I taught just the red hats, just the survival and sniper instructors. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, at at, uh, at the end, right, it, it felt good for it to be over because I was very stressed the whole time. But a few weeks later, uh, I get a letter in the mail, and a commanding officer's challenge coin or whatever, and uh, it still tears me up to this day to read the letter. Really. Yeah, it, 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 they said a lot of incredible things there. You know, um, you, you know, you earn the respect of the Marines. You're instrumental in, in X, Y, Z. Uh, they said, and so this was in their uh, summer survival program uh, versus the winter one. Uh, and I guess they had something like a, a f- excess of 50% drop rate uh, before uh, I taught their instructors. And then it went down to... 10% or less on the next course. Wow. Uh, 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 of guys that drop because uh, they, you know, and uh, <laughs> they showed a lot of appreciation. And, and that letter has gotten me a lot of business. You know, when wow. a commanding officer gives you a letter like that, because they're, 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 they're trying to support uh, your outfit. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, if, and people can read it on my site, uh, CA survival training.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, Thompson and survival schools we have it on the about us page and the awards page yeah and getting that letter and reading those words um yeah I was, I was very very proud especially from an organization like the marine corps yep 100 percent, man i love that that's that's motivating that's good stuff and it's proof of concept man it's that social proof is huge um well, any last thoughts to anyone who's thinking about coming to the symposium to learn learn from you? You know, and they're on the fence. What would you say? Yeah, try it out, man. Uh, there's going to be a lot of amazing people there, and not just the instructors. The I'm sure the people that you're going to meet there uh, in the crowd are going to be pretty awesome too. Uh, and it's a good first step to uh, finding a community. You know. Yeah, I'm sure you're going to have people from all over the world there. So no matter where you're from, you're, you're going to be able to meet like-minded people, yep. right? And this is how we network. We go to events like these mm-hmm. uh, to meet people like ourselves. Yep. Right? So maybe in where you live, there's not a lot of people like you, but yep. there are in this world, right? So right. this is how you network, right? This is how you network. And this is how you get trained up so you can set an example, to inspire people to be more prepared like yourself. Right. So you can, um, <laughs> let people know what they don't know. Yeah. Right. And there's a good way to get, get that kind of knowledge. Heck yeah. And then we didn't really talk directly about it. So I want to definitely get a little sound bite on it. What, you know, when it comes to disaster preparedness, bugging in, bugging out, what are you planning on teaching, uh, as Friday, obviously you'll be in the auditorium speaking from the podium and then Saturday and Sunday, people are going to get to go hands on. So, yeah, uh, of course, a basic ri- ri- risk assessment for staying or going and then creating your own little neighborhood. Right. We're going to show you how to have a portable domicile, how to have portable energy. We're going to go over communications and communications trade uh, 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 channels from MGRS to HAM. Right. And how to set up your own repeater systems, uh, the most important emergency medical care, portable hygiene. Um, all of these things. We're, we're, we're going to make sure that if you go, uh, you don't, what if, it's easy to what if yourself to death, right? Mm-hmm. Easy to what if yourself to death. What should I have? I have this, that, the other thing, right? So, so you may have, uh, you know, 10,000 rounds of ammunition with you, uh, but you don't have any way to wipe your backside, right? right? 
So, uh, you know, avoiding inappropriate forms of preparedness, right? Uh, not what ifing, what has, what will, right? right. A, a realistic approach to preparedness based on real world examples, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, this is what we're going to go over. Heck yeah. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. And you guys are going to obviously get the lecture, but you're also going to get to really touch these things, see these things, see what he's bringing, see what he's putting in his bug out bag, what his domicile looks like. It's, this is going to be so good, man. And it's so on time. My only lament is that we couldn't do it earlier in the year because these cats are talking about pandemic 2.0 and they're over here. Yeah, but you don't want to be in Arizona in the summer, brother. <laughs> That's, true. That's, true. That's another survival situation, man. Yeah. Oh, brother. Um, Oh, closing questions. Um, one habit uh, that you think people should look at to help them either become better people, better survivalists, or better protectors. It can be any one habit you think people should really think about integrating into their lives. Focus. Focus. Um, hmm. Focus on the right things, right? Hmm. So there's all kinds of distractions in this world, but focusing on what matters, right? If you have a family, focus on that family. Don't wait till you get some diagnosis or or whatever until it's too late. Appreciate what you have while it's here and make sure no one can take it from you. Make sure yeah. no one can take it from you. Yeah. And, and that's a big thing. Focus on your family. Focus on your loved one, loved ones. Focus on your communities. And as a protector, as the man that's going to make sure that, you know, the devil can't get through those walls. Yep. Yep. You know, yeah. um, you know, when you, you love something, you you protect it, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, keep a shine on things, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, yeah. So so focus on taking care of what you love. Focus okay. on making sure it stays around, you know, that every day. Show appreciation for those things every day. Yeah. You're going to have, you know, you're going to be more prepared when things go down and you're going to have just a better life all around. Yeah, hundred percent. And don't get distracted in the insignificant minutia and the rat race. You got to do what you got to do, but be grateful and thankful and invest in those things that really matter, man. I love it. I love it. That's motivating. And then the ult the ultimate question: When it's all said and done, how do you want to be remembered? You know, for your work and your contributions. It's an easy. It'd be nice just to be remembered, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. But if I am going to be remembered, which yeah. most of us will be, you know. Um, if I am going to be remembered, I just want to uh, hopefully uh, just making any positive difference. You know, I get testimonials sometimes from people and it's almost almost exclusively with the emergency medical care that I teach. Mm -hmm. um, I had a mom who had a 17 year old son send me this emotional email that they, they were driving down the road a week after they got through our medical training. And the son helped pull a driver out of a burning truck and provided care, That's right? Uh, emails like that where you see testimonials like that where you see, you know, like a boy become a man. Yeah, right? yeah. In the right way. They didn't just win a fist fight. Right. Uh, they ran toward the sound of gunfire. Yeah. They, they ran to the flaming vehicle. Yes, sir. And pulled someone out, right? That's how you become a man. Heck right. yeah. There's always a tougher guy out there. I, I could give a damn if you kick my butt. You know, God made man, but Samuel Colt made them all equal. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you may be able to kick my butt, you know, but I may have a wheel in the house for you, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so being running to the sound of gunfire, if I can inspire people to do that, if I could be remembered for that, that'd be great. That's beautiful, man. I love that. That's a good thing to strive for. And I think... Honestly, it's something we should all strive for. All humans should strive for. And I and I actually do. I mean, I was talking about it just this morning. It's like, you know, one of your first equations as a man is to become strong and competent. But why? The riddle of strength and power is that it's not for you. It's for superior service. And that is what unlocks all the beauty and the, the fulfillment of life is serving those communities and people. And there's nothing more fulfilling. I can make all the money in the world trying to do all this cool guy stuff, whatever. But when I get a guy that says, hey, Byron, like you changed my life, you know, you helped me gain a career that I can feed my family. I had the best Christmas of my whole life. I sold my truck to come to your course. And then a year later, I had the best Christmas of my whole entire life. Yeah. the career like it just gives me chills like you can't pay for this and this validates 
becoming competent, becoming strong, when your family's safe, like this is the stuff that we be, that we do all this stuff for. So and that's the real alpha. The, real, the alpha doesn't dominate his pack. He protects his pack. Yeah, he serves them. He protects the pack, serves, serves the pack. Yeah. It, if there's an attack on that pack, the alpha is going to be killed first. Yep. Hundred of you remember that. You bet we put ourselves out there. Yep. So that there's a saying that others may live, right? Yeah. So, yeah. And, and and you're gonna be more fulfilled that way. Yeah. You know, I I you know I, I miss it sometimes, right? I don't if I don't, you know, I I used to I used to the bell goes off, you know, you, you call 911, 911 used to call me, right? Yeah. And it's game. So, that kind of thing is very, very fulfilling. And if you ever have a chance to save a life or to impact a life series, to change a life, yeah. right? Then you'll really see what it means. You'll really see what it feels like to really be a man. For to the really live, yeah, and to be a man. That's beautiful, man. Wow. Good stuff, man. Thomas Coyne, this has been so good. I can't wait to hang with you, train with you, fellowship, you know? Uh, at this upcoming Protector Symposium. And I hope that a lot of you will join us, shake hands with us, train with us, get to know each other, build this community that the world needs right now. And uh, it's going to be amazing. Last question, where can people find you? And what are you up to these days? Yeah, uh, casurvivaltraining.com, or you could spell it all out, californiasurvivaltraining.com. We have 21 different courses now. Uh, from urban disaster, counter criminal exploitation, different firearm stuff. So they, you know, we have a, a a weekend, sixteen hours inside a two actual two story home, uh, doing civilian CQB. We we have combatives at a local MMA fight gym, and all the wilderness survival. You want to spear a salmon with a sharp stick in Alaska? You want to sleep in a in a shelter you made? Uh, from just the local materials for a week. Um, you want to you wanna learn all kinds of uh, off-grid emergency medical care, uh, we got you back. We're basically a, a college of survival. And you don't, we, we like to say we're the experts at making you the expert, huh. right? You don't have to be any kind of badass or anything like that to come take these courses. You just have to want to be a badass. Yeah. And we'll, we'll, we'll get you there. Yeah. We'll, we'll get you there so yeah come check it out you know check out a course check out a membership socal norcal alaska um a lot of people fly out for it uh and uh we got your back 100 percent, i love it my suggestion you guys just go on ahead and take all those courses spend a year of your life just taking all the courses that just do that and you will be a better person you'll be a better provider a protector all of the things Bring family. I mean, you want to talk about bonding with your family, like my buddy Daniel did. Took his son. Like, oh, you you want you want things that add value to your tribe. Just just spend a year and go to the college, the University of Survival, um, and your life will be better for it. Hundred percent. Definitely. Definitely. Thanks for that too. Yeah, hundred yep. percent. We do have a lot of we we do have a lot of family courses, and and we're big on it. Love we're it. Really- well, heck yeah, brother. Mayor, this has been amazing. Thanks so much for your time, your attention, sharing your competence and, and investing in our community, man. It's so much more to come, brother. Thank you for being here. Thank you. For, thanks for having me on, brother. It's been, it's been real. You have an awesome rest of your day. We'll see you soon. Awesome. Boom. We'll end it there. And then, dude, uh, I guess if you have a picture or something you want to send me for the cover and then uh, we'll add, my guys will add all the links into the description. Um, I'll collaborate with you when we drop the episode and dude, that was amazing. That was an amazing episode. Easy. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. it's been fun, man. I got to say, man, uh, you're an inspiring guy, man. I uh, respect the hustle. You know, seeing the different, the groups that you run, the Instagram pages, the the private groups. The stuff where people can 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 sign on, uh, it's inspiring and it's inspiring me to do more. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna start that. I know you have your like protector group. People can sign on, see all your stuff, and have live meetings and stuff. Uh, I'm starting something like that myself now. I, I want to push myself harder to have an online plat- learning platform. Yes. Uh, uh, it, it, it's inspiring, man. Keep it up. Keep it Thank up. You. No, that means the world, and we. Let's see, there's still some integration I wanted to do with you too, which will help you build those things. And any questions you have about any of this stuff, just hit me up, man. Just, you know, and then, you know, I'll tell you all the cheat codes. Um, But let's see. So we have the Civilian Protector Project. And I was going to wait until I could finally get to one of your courses and kind of, you know, like do like kind of show them a lot of the, what we're doing and and see if I could get a like a module from you on that to integrate into that online course. Um, sure. 
So let's see. I mean, we can talk a little bit more about it, but um, maybe just like a basic, you're at your home. This is where you should start getting prepared um, is what I'm kind of thinking we should do. What are your thoughts? Or I come to a course, obviously I'll do a tactical review of that course, but I want to have like a little bit of coursework to add to this civilian protection. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm, uh, I'll have some some real clean uh, training modules uh, more ready soon. Okay. Uh, I, I have a couple of books out. Uh, I'll have a, 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 some more soon. Heck yeah. Uh, and I'll have some, I'll have some good uh, content for you and we can put together uh, specific content to yeah. your people's needs. No problem. Easy. No problem. I, I, I really want to be everywhere right now. Yep. You and know, and hey, I just got a uh, another uh, shooting a pilot for the History Channel. Really? So, yeah. So maybe I'll be a uh, maybe I'll be a TV show host here soon. Yeah. We'll Heck yeah, man! That's what's up, dude. I got a, I got this. The it's Discovery. They're they're flirting with me on a few different things too, man. So we'll see. Maybe it's our it's our time. Congratulations on that, man! Congrats, yeah, for real, man, for real. Huge. They're gonna lowball you. Yep. Don't expect money, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, it's exposure and it'll get the product out. You know, exactly. For me, it's yeah, brand probably only, only a few grand an episode, probably, you know. Yep. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it, it's good. You'll crush it. Yeah. I mean, well, we have brands behind us. Our brands will monetize the exposure. So I'm good with it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. All right, brother. Well, have a wonderful day, man. More to come. I'll be bugging you about stuff as we get closer to, to, to the day, the deployment day as well. Awesome. Thanks, man. You take care. All right. Take care. Talk soon. Later. Boom! Quick shout out to our sponsor, Staccato. My first pistol sponsor. Um, I've been sponsored by a lot of companies, right, over the years. But when it comes to pistol, that's my bread and butter. Pistol is something I believe in. You know, I'm a competitive shooter. You know, we're shooting anywhere from, you know, 800 rounds a month type of thing, right? So Staccato being what I believe is one of, if not the most complete handguns you can put in your hand. Um, it's got every component that a handgun could have, should have. Uh, they're actually extremely dependable now that they've made some changes. And these things are straight up tack drivers. If you're looking for a pistol that will do as much of the work for you as a piece of hardware can, obviously you have to have the, the, the marksmanship and all the different things, but different guns perform at different levels. And I want to say that Staccato is one of by far, for sure, take it from a competitive shooter, we're shooting the highest volumes of rounds constantly right now, not used to have a background guy, but like right now, when you go shoot, you're gonna see certain brands. Staccato is one of, if not the highest performing firearm that is both CCW, duty ready, and also competitive ready. So I wanna give them a shout out if you guys are looking for a good handgun to build your skills on top of, go check out Staccato, much love and respect. Boom. Yo, what up? I hope you guys really enjoyed that episode. Hey, listen, in order to get more out of the brand, I want to encourage you to go join us on our social media platforms and join us at protectornation.com. We post different types of content on our different platforms at different times. Uh, you'll get blog posts, you'll get videos, you'll get real world combat engagements and things like that. So stay plugged in in order to get the most out of the brand. In order to support us, also go to protectornation.com and buy something or join forces with me on Patreon. You'll scroll down the homepage and you'll see the link. Uh, anything you can give counts, you know, think about whatever you would lose in your cushions or like spend on McDonald's this month, five bucks a month, whatever it is. Uh, that helps, that helps us make the world a better place by making good people dangerous. Anyways, this is Byron Rogers, protector by nature and by trade. And I'll see you on the next piece of content, whether it's a video or podcast out.